A growing number of market commentators think that AI could actually result in the productivity boom that so many people have been imagining. Welcome back to the AI Breakdown Brief, all the AI headline news you need in around five minutes. When it comes to Wall Street's enthusiasm around artificial intelligence, there are a few things to keep in mind. First of all, and I think that this can't be underestimated, unlike some other emergent technology categories, AI is already hitting the bottom line of a number of major companies translated via their cloud business. We've seen Microsoft's Azure cloud business, for example, grow revenue at least in part because of their new AI offerings. And that means that markets can see the financial benefit of AI right away. They don't have to just imagine it for the future. Now, on top of that, a second piece is, of course, hype. There's no denying the lofty language that we use to describe how big a deal AI will be in the future. But the third aspect is that, by and large, we haven't seen great big productivity increases for a very long time. And a growing chorus is betting that with AI, it actually will be different, that we will see productivity increases in a way we haven't for a very long time. On a recent earnings call, Larry Fink, the CEO of BlackRock, said that he believed that the company's investments in AI would not only drive up productivity, but also raise wages. He said on the call, we're going to bring down inflation in America. This is how it's going to have to be done, driven through technology, which will increase productivity. What it also means is rising wages. The whole organization is doing more with less people as a percent of the overall organization. That is really our ambition. Fink was even willing to give some numbers around this. At a conference last year, he said that he was spending a lot of his time thinking about how AI would reshape BlackRock. He said, we spend a lot of time with different technologists who know much more about this than I do. They believe things like it will increase productivity by 30%. So outside of just changing how their organization runs, does BlackRock have any other engagement with the AI space? Well, the way that Business Insider puts it is that it's positioning itself as a key player to power the AI revolution by becoming the capital supplier for new data centers and power generation facilities. Meanwhile, another financial giant, Stephen Schwartzman, the CEO of Blackstone, has a few more concerns, it seems. At the Asia-Pacific Financial and Innovation Symposium in Melbourne on Tuesday, Schwartzman said there is a, quote, land rush underway to build data centers and other infrastructure for artificial intelligence. He said, this is like something I've never seen. The amount of money being invested in this area is breathtaking. It's happening now all over the world. And indeed, Blackstone is a part of that. In 2021, they acquired data center operator QTS in a $10 billion deal. Said Schwartzman, different states in the U.S. are starting to run out of electricity. That lack of capacity in the electric grids in the industrial world with AI and EVs is creating enormous investment opportunities. Schwarzman also said that he had recently spoken with Chinese President Xi Jinping, discussing the needs for global AI regulatory standards. And then there's David Solomon, the CEO of Goldman Sachs. He recently argued that the scale at which AI is driving companies to reinvent themselves is, quote, candidly unprecedented. Solomon basically argued that as enterprises go through this restructuring process, it creates lots of opportunities for Goldman Sachs. Now, he was saying this on an analyst call, so he was talking about the company's future prospects. He said, I actually think there's a very, very constructive runway of opportunity sets for us with our clients as people reposition their businesses. I think that opportunity is not a quarter to quarter thing. This is over the next five to 10 years, and we're very, very focused on it and very engaged. He also noted that governments are, quote, making enormous investments in bringing infrastructure into their locales. So all in all, a lot of big financial talk when it comes to AI, which is once again why I think it's so silly when you see media outlets try to argue that somehow the AI hype is dying down. Meanwhile, over in big tech land, Google DeepMind CEO Demis Hassabis spoke at TED this week and said that over time, Google will spend more than $100 billion developing their AI. The comments came after Hassabis was asked about Microsoft and OpenAI's reported $100 billion supercomputer called Stargate. Hassabis said, we don't talk about specific numbers, but I think we're investing more than that over time. He also touted that Alphabet still had superior computing power to rivals, even including Microsoft. Indeed, he said that that's one of the reasons that DeepMind went to Google back when it was acquired. He said, one of the reasons we teamed up with Google back in 2014 is we knew that in order to get to AGI, we would need a lot of compute. That's what's transpired, and Google had and still has the most computers. Even while Google tries to differentiate from big tech competitors like Amazon and Microsoft, the information notes that their cloud AI strategy is definitely starting to sound some similar notes. The reporter was talking about a recent Google Cloud conference where they heard one executive say, we don't believe one model will rule them all. This is, of course, the message that AWS has been touting and embedded into their bedrock service. Although the author also makes the point, quote, side note, Next time you hear someone say there won't be one model to rule them all, I challenge you to ask them who actually believes there will be one model to rule them all. Now, when it comes to what this means in terms of who has an advantage, this author wonders if the parity of offerings mean that ultimately the buying decisions will come down to 
much more mundane factors like who a customer already has existing spending relationships with. Over in China, Baidu has reported that its AI chatbot ErnieBot has seen more than 200 million users, which is roughly double since the last update in December. Baidu CEO Robin Lee also said that the API for ErnieBot is being used 200 million times every day. The number of enterprise clients for ErnieBot has reached 85,000. Competition in China is heating up. Reuters writes, recent data shows that rival domestic AI services, particularly the Kimi chatbot from a 12-month-old Alibaba-backed startup named Moonshot AI, are quickly catching up with ErnieBot. ErnieBot was visited a total of 14.9 million times across its app and website last month, while Kimi had a total of 12.6 million visits in the same month. And Kimi was growing much faster, with visits jumping 321.6% in March from February, while the number of visits to ErnieBot grew more than 48%. Speaking of China, Intel is following the NVIDIA playbook and launching a set of AI chips with reduced capacities that come in under U.S. export restrictions for the Chinese market. The two chips are called the HL328 and the HL388 and are scheduled to come out in June and September. NVIDIA also apparently has plans for three new China-specific chips as well. Now, fittingly, we will end on this conversation about China and exports. As you will see, it has an integral role in our main episode, which is about G42 and their new deal with Microsoft. However, that is going to do it for the AI Breakdown Brief. Next up, the main AI Breakdown.